Author Victor Villasenor has written 65 stories and nine novels. In his memoir, Burrow Genius, which was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize, shares his experiences as a youth. Not bad for someone who remembers school in his youth as a nightmare, which led him to becoming a bedwetter. That was coupled with years of facing language and cultural barriers, heavy discrimination, and a reading problem, which was later diagnosed as dyslexia. But his persistence in his dream to become a writer couldn't be bridled, and he learned to bridge the river between words. Here's a World of Difference correspondent, Brad Kuhn, with his story. Meet Victor Villasenor, a best-selling author who loves goats and hates bullies and thinks the world would be better if people would admit that we're all a little bit loco. She's 18 years old. She's very hurt. Her bones hurt. She can barely lay down at night. She's bony. And the mother and daughter bully her and I need to protect her. I've always hated bullies. In his memoir, Burrow Genius, Villa Senor recounts his childhood in Southern California and the frustration of growing up Latino and severely dyslexic in an English-only American school in the 1940s. Teachers beat him because he could not speak English. Bullies, and even his friends, called him a stupid Mexican because he couldn't read. One great big guy bullied me. He was a s junior in high school or something, and I was a, in the eighth grade. He bullied me and bullied me. He said, when you get into high school, I'm going to really get you. So the day I got into high school, I came and I said, all right, you're going to really get me. I'm ready. You're going to beat me, but I'm going to bite you, and I'm going to kick, and I'm going to scream. And he thought I was crazy. He said, you're right. come on, I'm, 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 I'm going to bite you. And he backed away. He said, you're crazy. I said, yes, I'm crazy, you big coward bully. And he never got near me again. And after that, you know what? Other people didn't get near me either. It's good to be crazy, local. I uh, went all through grammar school, high school, couldn't read. And uh, I didn't get diagnosed until I had, I got married and had children. And when I, t when I was 20 years old and I finally learned, wanted to become a writer, I had a vision in Wyoming uh, to become a writer, that to write every culture has its own story. The Jews have the Bible, the, everybody has their own books. And I needed a book for my people. The, Native Americans of, of, the, of the United States, that any story we tell about ourselves, we get ridiculed and called stupid Indians and savages and everything. So, so when I, I went back to my old high school teacher, Moffat, and said, I've decided that I need to become a great writer. What do I do? And he said, you're going to have to learn how to read. And I said, sir, you knew that all the time? He said, well, yeah. When you became a chess champion of the school, and you solved math problems and nobody else, we began to understand that you couldn't read. And I said, well, I, I can't do that. He said, yes, you can. If you can't read, you can memorize words. Start with third grade books, with third, fourth grade books, and memorize every word by writing it down five, six, ten times, real, pressing down real hard so it goes in, engraves into your brain. Like when we turn on the light at home, our hand knows where the switch is before our brain. Well, your hand will know how to spell a word before you, mind will know. And so he said, try to learn a uh, hundred words a week. Uh, keep going to the library, checking out books. And he said, once you get to a seventh grade level, you can start writing because you only need a seventh grade level to become a great writer because you'll be forced to keep things simple and you, and you have a very wonderful mind playing chess, so you're gonna do well. So he guided me and he told me how to wear a rubber band over my hand so that I wouldn't get cramps and not to sit in a chair, to sit on a little bench and then get up and write and sit down and write. 
And he said, it's going to take years and years. And he was right. It took 10 years, 265 rejections before I sold my first book. And, and, and he, and he uh, guided me. And then Mr. Ronald Kaiser, a pulp fiction writer, guided me. And between those two tough Germans, I, I became a writer. And I, I could have never done it without asking for help. Not being embarrassed, just ask for help. I learned how to read. I learned how, how to read. Then I started reading great books very slowly. It took me, it took me years to read one book that somebody else read. I read philosophy and, and books on psychology. And then I discovered novels. I didn't know anything about Steinbeck or Hemingway or any of those people. And then I started reading them. And then I said, well, these, when you write a, a good book, can take you out of your isolated existence and, and introduce you to these people, a good novel, and you become closer to them than your own family. And, and then when, and, and they're your friends. And pretty soon, all my best friends were books and characters and books. And, and, and then I started writing and, and acting like, trying to copy them and, and learn from them. And, and finally, when I got published, my first book called A La Brava, which they changed to Macho, what happened? The LA Times compared it to the best of John Steinbeck. And my second book, Jury, was, was the front page of the New York Times book review and called Too Good to Be Truth. And, I'd, and I don't write one book once. I rewrite every page. Right now, I'm working on four pages for two weeks. And before that, I worked on six pages for a month and a half. And what a writer. He wrote nine novels and 65 short stories and received 265 rejections persevering before his first book, Macho, was published in 1991. Since then, he's published 16 books and founded a nonprofit promoting world peace. Burrow Genius, which took him more than 40 years to finish and get published, was a finalist for a Pulitzer Prize, one of three of his works nominated for the prestigious award. Life is full of miracles, and every one of you kids that has difficulties, remember this, you are special, you are wonderful. Thank you for coming. For World of Difference, I'm Brad Kuhn. Thanks for the story, Brad, and congratulations, Victor. Your story shows that children with learning differences need not close the book on success.